Hey everybody, welcome back to our tutorial series. We are now in part three of using JSON um, with iOS, or rather loading data from an external database um, using iOS, JSON, and PHP. So, so far we've created our city class, uh, we've finished up the implementation for that. Our next stop is going to be our view controller file so we can create the necessary table view and load it up with the data. So let's jump into our view controller's nib file. Uh, one of the first things I'm going to do is find a table view object and just drag that onto our screen. I'm going to then right, right click and set the data source and delegate for this particular table view to be files owner. Also going to open up the assistant editor because I want to create a IB outlet to this particular table view so I can uh, basically edit it via, through code. I just uh, right click it and drag a connection to my view controller and here we'll call this my table view, something simple. Uh, hit connect and I will go back to the standard editor view. Hit command S to save and we are now ready to begin using the view controller's uh, header file. So let's do um, I am going to uh, jump in here and uh, first thing I'll do is explicitly conform to the fact or explicitly state that we are going to be conforming to the data source uh, and delegate protocols for table views. Now if you've never used table views before, I've got a, I think a pretty decent tutorial um, on my channel and I would strongly recommend that you watch that before you take a look at this tutorial. I will not be covering the data source and delegate methods that you have to implement um, for a table view in detail here. Uh, so if you've never worked with them before, please be sure to take a look at that tutorial. All right, so UI table view data source, UI table view delegate. Um, I'm also going to create a couple different properties. So I'm just going to say at property non atomic strong. And what I'm going to create is an NS mutable array. And I'm just going to call that JSON. So this is the the array that I will use to store the initial JSON data that comes through. I'm also going to create another array and this time I'm going to call it the cities array and what this will be is essentially a, an array of objects um, and then specifically city objects that are based on that city class that we just created. We also want to create one method um, just do a pragma mark here real quick called methods and I'm gonna create a method called retrieve data and what this method is going to do is it's going to read our JSON data and basically try to fill it into this particular NS mutable array and also the cities array right okay so with that done uh, let's jump over to our view controllers implementation file I suppose one thing we could do here is be sure to do a pound import on our city.h file so that way we can create or instantiate city objects jump back into the view controllers implementation file you'll notice I immediately get a warning and that's because I haven't implemented the data source and delegate methods for our table view but the first thing I'd like to do is synthesize all our properties so we've got an array called JSON, I've got an array called cities array, and I've got a table view called my table view. So let me go ahead and synthesize all of that. I'm also going to create a constant variable. So I'm just going to say pound define, and we'll call it maybe data, what do we want to call this? Data retrieval URL. Yeah, that works. So. and I'm going to set that to be. Now this is essentially a page um, that is the PHP file that we created in part one of this tutorial series. I stuck it up on a server and that uh, server can now connect to my MySQL database and so that way I can read this file from there. So let's iOS demo. So I'm gonna make sure that this is the URL in a second. It's just json.php. Give me a second so I can verify with my notes. And so it's concave.com, iOS demos, json.php. Uh, so that looks good. And I think I'd call this get data URL. So we'll just change that. You can call it whatever you like. Um, so there we go. So we now have this particular uh, URL defined, and we're going to use this to pull our JSON data in. And what I'm going to do here is come down 
and implement the data source and delegate methods for my UI table view. Now, like I said, this is a tutorial about JSON and using that within iOS, so I'm not going to go into detail about the table views, data source, and delegate methods. You can look up that particular class if you like or go watch my tutorial. I've actually got an Xcode snippet, which is a shortcut. Uh, if I type it in, uh, Xcode automatically recognizes that and asks me if I'd like to insert all those methods. So like I said, it's just a handy way to add code that you use all the time um, into your programs. And I've got a, a decent tutorial on that as well on my channel. So take a look at code snippets. If you don't use them, um, or rather, I should say, if you're going to, if you use them, you're going to save a lot of time while programming. So I'm going to hit enter and that automatically like I said adds in for me the data source and delegate methods that I'd saved as part of that code snippet so um, you'll notice of course that the warning uh, has not quite disappeared yet and the reason it hasn't is because uh, Xcode's telling us that we still need to implement this particular method so let me go ahead and copy that signature and I will jump down here and paste it command is to save and I had a semicolon there so I got rid of that and now the warnings go away so let's just take a look at the data source methods real quick there's a number of sections in table view I'm returning one for that there's a table view number of rows and section I'm returning 10 there and that should work just fine for now but it's a constant number and we're gonna have to change that uh, same thing for you know what what set as the text label dot text or what do you actually see in the row that value is being set here and then we haven't quite implemented the did select row at index path method just yet but we will go ahead and do that as well so the first method that we probably want to tackle is this retrieve data method uh, because this is the method we're going to use to pull really all of our data from our uh, PHP page and we're going to use that data and set it up so that it's in uh, both of our arrays. So our first step is to create an NS URL. We're going to set that URL. We're just going to call that object URL. And it's going to be, we're going to use a class method called NS URL, URL with string. And all we have to do is pass it in get, what do we call our constant here? Get data URL. There it is my colon very good next we're going to create an NS data object and we're just going to call that data and this time we're going to say NS data and the method that we're looking for is data with contents of URL and I have it here in my code hint and it takes an NS URL value we'll just pass it the one that we just created so command S to save and we are good to go with those two items. Then what we want to do is we want to grab all of the JSON data and stick it into our JSON array. So I'm going to do that by just saying JSON is NS JSON serialization and we're going to call the method JSON object with data. This is the one that we want. So it takes an NS data value. Guess what? We just pass that in data options. Um, we can set that to K nil options and the error I'm just gonna set to nil don't really need an NS error there command S to save and that is done then we want to populate our cities array so maybe put in a comment we'll say set up our cities array and we're gonna do that by saying cities array is NS mutable array it's just gonna do an alloc and a standard init on it. Command S to save, and we are at least, we've instantiated and given it some space or memory. Uh, from here, what we want to do is we actually want to loop through our JSON array and create a new city object every single time and then stick that object into our cities array. So let's see how that can be done. So we do a standard little for loop. Um, that's fine. So initialization would be int i. Let's assign the value of zero. I is less than JSON dot count. So what we want to do is we want to loop through until we've reached the last element in our JSON array. So JS less than JSON dot count is what we want. I plus plus. Come down here, and then we'll create some 
I don't want to call temporary string, but really we're going to create some NS strings object, NS string objects. Um, so I'll just go ahead and label this as, as create a city object, but first we're going to have to create some NS string objects. So we'll create an NS string object. The first one I'm going to call is just going to be CID. And we're going to say it's, it is equal to JSON, the object at index. So you can try that again. Object at index. NSU unsigned integer, that's going to be I, because that's the current um, item. And then we're going to say object for key. And we're simply going to give it the name of the object. So in this case, it should be ID. Command S for the first one. All right. Now, I know that there's five of these items, so I'm just going to do a quick copy paste another four times. And then we'll go back and change those values. So first one was CID. The second one we're going to call C name. Third one let's just call C state. And these are names, of course, that I'm just making up here. Um, I know they look consistent with what we had created um, in our class. So, but that is by design. So, okay. So C country. Now we most certainly we'll have to change the key values here and that is something that you'll want to pay attention to so as you create your query take a look at what you are actually returning as part of the query now let me pull up my my SQL workbench again so remember what I had done is I created these five attributes and what you don't see here of course is what I'm using within my query um, so within my query let me pull up Dreamweaver here you'll see that my query actually says select star from city. So really what I'm doing is returning everything that is in my table in terms of an attribute. So for that reason, I have to name all of these keys with that same uh, uh, attribute name. So I have named them in my database as ID, city name, city state, and city population, and the last one simply had the name country. So again, these are the names of my columns or attributes in my database table. So with that done, we've got that particular piece set up. Now I can go through and I can create a new city object. I'm just going to call it my city. I'm going to do a city alloc. And we're going to initialize it using that method that we created in our city class. So you see when I uh, type in in it I do get that back and now I can go through and pass in the values that we just created so the first thing I'm gonna pass in is CID Let's see if we can get it to recognize it see there are times when Xcode will be difficult done doing this what I'm going to do is just copy this for some reason my keyboard has been acting up today so I'm just gonna go through do a command C here and put that there command C post that there C population is I believe the next one Push that there. And C country. I'm going to go ahead and paste that there. Command S. All right. So obviously, we still seem to be having some issues. Let's go take a look and see. It says unused variable CID. So why is that occurring? Now, I have a suspicion that there may be something wrong with our method itself. So let me go take a look at our cities. Uh, file so we've got okay in it with city ID we've got CID C name C state C population city country okay so the method looks fine let's jump back here take a look at what we might be doing incorrectly so we said in it with CID and we are passing it the value of uh, CID so this should be absolutely okay and let's try this one more time I'm not sure why our method is acting up but I'm gonna try city my city is city alloc 
and I wanted to do a init. Okay, so our init string here should be C ID, and part of the problem may be that it's not recognizing that. So let's see what's going on. Uh, so this is our init string object, and we are good there. This is also an init string object. These are all unused variable errors. All right, guys, I'm going to pause the video for a second so I can figure out what's going on with this particular method uh, instead of uh, letting you watch me bumble around this. So uh, pause for a quick second, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I w wonder if some of you have already spotted the error. Um, it may be that I've been staring at my screen for way too long. Well, if you haven't, guess what the error is? It's pretty embarrassing. It's basically I've stuck this particular uh, method outside of my for loop, which is a problem because of the fact that all of these, uh, the scope of these variables are within this particular for loop block. So all I have to do is command x this and make sure I move it into the right spot. And that's why uh, none of these values were actually getting recognized. So city name this is just going to be C name, put it back in here, city state, command C, put that here, city population, and C, put that here, and city country is just going to be C country, so we'll do that and put that here, and semicolon, and voila, all the errors are gone. So we still get a warning, and it's simply because we've not actually used our uh, my city object just yet but that is exactly what we are going to do in one second and so our next step or our final step here would be to add our city object to our cities array okay easy to do that we just say cities array and we call the add object method and we just pass it in my city so what's going to happen here? Just let's kind of like uh, step back and take a look at what we've done. So what we did is we created an NS URL uh, using that particular URL that I shared at the top of the page, and from there we've also created an NS data object. We then filled our JSON array with um, th uh, using this particular NS JSON serialization method or that class and the JSON object with data method. We then set up a cities array, uh, allocated some memory for it, and we looped through all of the data in our JSON array, created a city object, created strings first, then created a city object and initialized it with our custom method. And then we simply added that particular new object to our cities array. So you can see we've filled two of our arrays here um, very quickly. And we're going to do one last thing within this particular method itself. We're going to say self dot my table view and we're just going to say reload data okay we're now up uh, to 18 minutes on this particular video so I'm going to once again uh, break this video apart and stop here and I will catch you in the next tutorial that way you can catch up if need be thanks for watching